Hello, thanks for watching. My name is Angelo with Freedom Mobile Living. Don't wait until you get a certain age and you look back and you say to yourself, I haven't made it yet or I haven't arrived there yet. The trouble with most people is that we're chasing happiness. We're looking for happiness to be down the road when this happens or that happens. Happiness happens to deal with today. To be grateful for where you're at, where God has placed you in your life. Most people uh, do a lot of wishful thinking. And what I mean by that is they have an idea of where they want to go. So they run that rat race and they run it and they run it and they run it hard. But by the time they get to a certain age, they look back and they say, I haven't arrived. I never made it. Now, I'm not saying you didn't go for more income because anytime we do anything in business or in a job, we progress to make more income. But most of us have this uh, idea in our head that uh, to make us happy, it's way out here. To make us happy, wait till we get here. Wait until this happens. And that's the farthest thing from the truth because it doesn't wait for that. It's today is where happiness is. By you sitting here and having a, a sense of gratitude, that's where happiness is. When I started my journey, a lot of people wonder, uh, how in the heck can you live in an SUV? Or how can you be on the road? Isn't that unstable? Don't you feel like uh, that you don't have security? And that's farthest thing from the truth. My journey started back when I started getting an idea to look at people who have been living this life immobily. You know, they're doing it in a car, they're doing it in a van, they're doing it in a, a mobile home, a Class C or an A. And I met all people from all types of life dealing with being a nomad. The, what ties me is I started to get an interest in it and so I started researching it. And as I was researching it, it brought me into a, a, a closer to it. I never in the wildest dream ever thought would I go in from a sticks and bricks and go into something that was mobily. Never thought that. Matter of fact, when I look at people, if they told me they lived in their car, I would think, hey, what happened? Hey, did life really get you down? Man, you must be really struggling. When I first started, it's almost like how God works. You know, he gives you something placed in front of you. Uh, you get a sense that it came from him, but in order to be sure about that you always test what comes in front of you but god has a way to take you down a path so it's hard to see it while you're going down that path that he's taken it's generally after you've done it you look back and you think hey that was smart hey he did this and that's how we really look at it but what i have always done especially since one of my son uh, passed away he was 22 years old and it was very hard for me to deal with so I had a, a, a deal where me and God were dealing with it. And uh, it happened to be on uh, 131 going south, going to St. Joe, and it was a snowstorm. And I got feelings that I just want to end it. I just want to end it. Uh, and he pretty much told me, hey, I'm the one that takes gives life. I'm the one that takes it. And so through the whole discussion, I won't get into what happened to us corresponding back and forth, but I might had a desire to end my life. Then I realized that it wasn't me to make that choice, it was God to make that choice. And I said, okay, here's the deal. From this day forward, I will keep you more in my life. Matter of fact, when I go through life, regardless what it is, I'll pass it by you. I'll, I'll get more of a relationship with you. And I'll do it more often throughout the day, not just in the morning, just at night. And it was progression over time. But that was my desire, and I told him, this is what I'll do, and I'll read your word. Those are the two things. I can get kicked in the teeth. I can get thrown in prison. I can be down in my luck. But one thing for sure is I will follow your direction. So from that day on, I always ran it by him. Everything in life. It didn't start out where I did it all the time. I did it twice a day, and then it went to three times, then it went to five times. Now I do it on a constant basis. Some people think I'm a nut because I do it even when I might be uh, transporting or driving from one area to another. Some people might think I'm a nut because I offer blessings on my car, and so I don't have any mechanical problems when I'm on the road. 
But anyhow, when that happened, I left there and it wasn't like I became a nomad at that moment. It wasn't until years later that God was preparing me for this journey that he's put me on. And people say, oh, you're a nut. How does God put you? He puts all of us on a journey, but we have to be receptive of listening to what he says and how he directs us. If I'm looking at doing all the wrong things in life, then obviously I'm not looking for God. So I do try to do the right things, but I always pass it by him. And so before I make a decision, I want him to nudge me in a direction where I can go. And I'll give an example. I was living in Detroit, Michigan, and I was uh, working there in Westland, Michigan. I wanted to get back to Grand Rapids because uh, my family was there. So no matter what I tried, I always uh, I, I filled out applications. I got interviews. I just never got hired. Finally, God gave me a vision. He gave me a vision of Abraham and Sarah. When they wouldn't wait on his blessing, they wanted to do it themselves. And then that created a whole kinds of problems. So because he gave me that vision, I said, okay, I'll wait. I'll sit here. I'll wait. I'll wait until you tell me. And that's exactly what I did. It wasn't until three years later that he moved me. Now, if I was uh, impatient like Abraham and Sarah were, if their story wasn't there, I wouldn't have learned that. But I learned to have patience and let him direct me on where I should go. It's almost like when I left Westland, all of a sudden he wanted to move me. I applied for a job. Boom, I got the job and I moved back to Grand Rapids. That's how quick that story went. But when I look back at Westland, I always ask when I was there, God, why did you bring me here? God, why am I here? And then it was when I left is when I looked back and I realized that if I wasn't there, I wouldn't have been instrumental in some people's lives. They wouldn't be instrumental in mine because I get moved just as much as I move others. So I think life is about giving and uh, sharing I can't understand how our life or our world has got to a point where we have people that have plenty and then we have people that have nothing. I mean, it was supposed to be where we shared with each other, we helped each other, and we edified each other, and we built each other up, but that's not what happened. That's not what happened. We're in a very what's-in-it-for-me society. And I don't see any change. If you look at Revelations, you look at the future is going to be, I don't believe anything will change. So with that, I went back to Grand Rapids. But to still get back to the story of why I did this, he nudged me, I started researching other people doing, the, doing it, so it became more of a reality for me. Then I realized that I could do this. And life just happened after that. Things in my life changed. It's almost like I was looking to do something and God was directing me into that direction. Eventually, the pandemic hit. And then I came back to Michigan and I said, a light went on and I said, I'm not even supposed to be here. And that's when I started deciding to become a nomad living in uh, my vehicle. And it, was, it hasn't been easy. Uh, let's just put it one thing. I've had more blessings. I've lived a life of more freedom. Not only in tune to my life, but also in tune to my God since I have done this and I've met so many people, so many people that ordinarily I wouldn't have met. And I don't care where I went. I went to Palm Springs. I went, I went to, to New Mexico, wherever I went, I ran across people that were hurting in this world. Now, my God, I'm not a rich man. So it's not like I can go throw money at everybody, but I don't believe in throwing money. I don't think that solves the problem. I believe God has put me on this journey for whatever reason that is. Up to this point, I've seen the reasons. Even just one of those people that I have touched. And I'll get into the stories maybe in another video. But there's many stories just by me being there. And God brought me there to those people. And enabled me to be blessed, to be instrumental to change their lives or to transform it in some way or another. I thank him for that, and I am blessed. So I am not arrogant about it. I don't think I'm a goody two-shoes because I'm not. I'm a sinner just like everybody. I go every day, I pick up my cross, and I go through the day. 
But because I am a human, I am a sinner. My right, the desires of my flesh are more important than anything else, and that's really a, with all of us. If we don't not learn how to control our body, our body will control us, and that gives you a hurting and a hurting for life. So in order to have that peace and that tranquility and the less anxiety, I was striving for that all my life. And God put me on a journey that the nomad was the one way to do it. Now, obviously, I had to make adjustments because who in the heck wants to go from a bed that's in a, in a sticks and bricks and then go into sleeping into a vehicle? So I had to accustom and adjust, and I had to learn. I had to learn how to sleep. How can I sleep that makes it comfortable for me to have a good night's sleep? And I had to find that out. Another thing is how I live. I need energy some places I go. I don't want to run the car all the time. So I need energy. So I had to find ways to get energy. I didn't want to sweat. I don't like sweat. I don't like humidity. I'm really, I hate humidity. But... I still have to have some type of climate control, especially if I'm, I'm living in my vehicle and I'm going into areas that has a little bit of a different climate that's hard to actually accustom yourself to. I learned one thing very important that it's easier to adjust and find that out than I thought it was. I thought it was gonna be a dilemma and a deal breaker. And I'll give you an example. The first night I spend the night in this vehicle was on a mountain in Colorado. And when I was up there and I was sleeping, I felt claustrophobic. And I got so crazy, I had to get up. I ended up sleeping in the front seat. But then I realized, now I could have quit right then. I could have said, nope, this ain't for me. I'm gonna go the other way. Cause I really believe the other guy was actually doing that to get me to go quit. And I know without a fact, this is my journey God wants for me. It's not for everybody, but it's for me. So I felt claustrophobic. So instead of just like relinquishing and giving up at that point, I decided to fight. And I said, why did I feel claustrophobic? What was in my surroundings or situation that made me felt that way? And really what it was, too many things on the side of me. So as I was sleeping, I had things on me and I just felt like locked in. Even though I wasn't, I just felt. Another thing I had a problem with was the heights from the bed to the ceiling, because I'm used to having a high ceiling. So that took a little bit to get used to, all right? So I knew there were some things I had to adjust and maybe get used to over time. And I was willing to do that. And I have been willing to that today. I feel it's the easy way to live. I can't imagine living any other way. One thing I like about it is the freedom to go where I want because only when I go different areas am I gonna meet different people. I'm gonna meet people that God puts in my way with situations that they're hurting. Uh, there's so many stories. I'd like to get into all the stories, but then I'll get sidetracked. But there's so many stories that uh, he has put people in my path Actually, some people have been praying and then I happen to be the lucky one that God put in their path in order to change some things in their life. It's the greatest feeling in the world. And everybody, if you know anything about me, I am a nomad, I live in my SUV, my RAV4. Uh, I make my income by digital marketing. I do a couple, some work for a couple companies. Not a lot, probably about 20 hours a week. That gives me income. I'm also the ride local by ride share. I drive people, generally medical, you know, people have to go to medical appointments, sometimes not. Sometimes people that just want to go to the airport. But I drive them and that makes extra income as well. I always make more money than what I need and that way I'm in a position to have security if something happens. If I have to replace tires in the car, I can do that if I have anything happen to the car. So a lot of my money, a lot of my time is spent into the vehicle, why? Because this is, this is what I had, this is mine. So when I got insurance, guess what I got? Rental, for accident, collision, so things are real easy because this is really my domain. Not for everybody, only for me. 
and never thought I'd ever get into this position and it's only because of the grace of God I have. Thank you for watching and if you like it, give me a thumbs up and if you want other people to learn from some of these sites, I'm no smarter than anybody else. I just have a, a vision and that God has given me. I've also had the path that God has given me and I've learned so many things that God has taught me. And if I can touch someone else's life by having you understand a little bit more about Jesus, then I've done my job being in this world. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you on the next video. Bye-bye.